Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, Mark, such a great pleasure to have you back on the show. Third time now, so um, I'm glad you're here again. I know uh, usually when you come on the show, you're just about to go into an award ceremony. You've just kind of come out of one um, in America. So how is that? Is this now a wind down time for you? Are you in relaxed mode? <laughs> yeah, thanks very much for having me on again, Chris. Not quite as um, not quite as tropical climbs as when we last met in uh, in Bangkok. But yeah, pleasure as ever to to come on the podcast. Uh, I'd love to say yes. This is uh, this is wind down time immediately post um, North America's fifty best bars, which we held in um, San Miguel de Allende in, in Mexico a couple of weeks ago. But we're um, we're all, all sort of all systems go ahead of um, Asia's fifty best bars, which takes place in Hong Kong, as you well know. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on in Asia this year, which is really fantastic. Not only do we have Asia 50 Best in Hong Kong, but Worlds in Singapore, uh, BCBs over here as well. There's such a big, you know, spotlight going on in the area. So looking forward to it. But maybe let's have a recap of what happened in, over in America. Um, we obviously had an amazing show there. Can you tell me about some of the highlights? For sure, for sure, yeah. It was, um, well, San Miguel de Allende is a beautiful um, UNESCO heritage town, which is roughly, it's roughly 400 kilometers northwest from Mexico City. Um, when we saw it in pictures, we thought, oh yeah, this is a great place to, um, great place to take the North American bar community. But when we realized that there were only, I think there were 45 Nick and Nora glasses in the entire, in the entire city. <laughs> Uh, and and, speci and speciality ice was not a thing there. Um, so when we realised that the infrastructure wasn't that great, um, we realised we had a big big job on our hands. And yeah, our ops team did uh, had a fair few fair th few ho hoops to jump through to make uh, to make the ceremony and the bars as, as sort of professional as, as we like them. But yeah, we got we, we sort of got our act together, and with the support of our brand partners, um, we were able to put on three great events. It was our First ever Al Fresco Bartender's Feast, um, which we held at Live Aqua Hotel, um, which was just an amazing event. Really, really good. We had sort of four guest bartenders from all over the world come in for that one. We flew in uh, Hampus Thunholm from uh, Roda Husset in, in Sweden, which was our Campari one to watch at the World Awards last year. We had um, Yvonne Chen from Argo in Hong Kong came across. Uh, and Laura and Ivan from Alchemico in, Ma in, in Cartagena in Colombia um, came up. So they really brought, brought the vibe. Um, but I think, yeah, the three days of events, um, because everyone had made such, um, such a big effort to get to San Miguel de Allende, they came with um, the right attitude to just party for three days. Um, and as you can probably tell from my voice, I'm probably still recovering a little bit from um, three days of great events. <laughs> and, uh, and the show itself on the... Um, on the on the Tuesday, on the on the Wednesday night was just um, was out of this world because in Mexico it's slightly slightly better value for us to put on events um, than it was certainly than it was in New York the year previously we could really we could really invest some good capital in making the show uh, as spectacular as it was so there were fireworks we had like laser displays we had video mapping um, yeah and all credit to um, our events agency that we worked with there and our and indeed our ops team that, um, that that brought everything together so it was a great great three days for all the whole bar community I think yeah fantastic man I mean I was following on social media it looked amazing and uh, I'll be looking forward to getting over to America at some point soon to go through the list and obviously congratulations to everyone on the list because they're all winners in their own right um, but Double Chicken Please got number one spot, uh, which I think they were quite surprised at. Um, tell us more about that. I mean, uh, I've never been to the bar, but I mean, it looks fantastic. It's very unique as well. Yeah, completely. Um, so I think, yes, they were they were quite uh, they were quite surprised to have won. Uh, they were to 17 last year and they'd only been open roughly a year when we published last year's list. Um, they did very well in the world list, which is generally a good barometer for how um, how a bar is going to perform in the regional list. I think they came in at number five picking up the um the disarono heist new entry as well at the same time so they could they probably had a decent idea that they were probably going to do quite well but like you say it's certainly in my mind it's one of the most unique um a truly unique bar concept that that's come uh, that's been that's been opened in, in certainly new york city in the last decade or so i mean it's just you could probably say that it's nothing nothing new to find savory cocktails on a list but such accurate um, incarnations of food dishes like I've had the, the the cold pizza there it's just it's just delicious and does taste like cold pizza the key lime pie cold noodle soup um, they're, they're sort of really original dishes and something which which I didn't realize the the genesis of um, GN Chan who's the co-owner with Fei Chen um, two Taiwanese um, who, who actually own the who own the bar and launched it uh, in 2020 
Um, his first idea of, of sort of coming up with a savoury or food based cocktail, um, a lady came in who was going into into cancer treatment the following day and she couldn't uh, she had nil by nil, no food by mouth um, before she went into hospital. She was a bit upset at the bar and he said, what's your what's your favourite dish? And I'll try and recreate it in liquid form. And she said um, it was a beet salad, um, which is, I guess, with those kind of flavours, it's they're not the, not the hardest to replicate, but still 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 not easy to, to put that into into sort of cocktail form. And he went away and in half an hour he came back and he uh, he had his first ever sort of incarnation of food in, in, in a cocktail form. And the beet salad is still on the menu. Um, and yeah, they sort of just took that concept and ran with it. So it's um, it's a great bar. They're two two amazing people and their whole team. Lots of the lots of the staff have never worked in hospitality before. There's 17 of them with nine different nationalities working there. So it's a hugely diverse operation. And yeah, we were great. To, we were just very lucky to be able to celebrate them in in San Miguel de Allende. And it's great to see when um, when people who really deserve accolades and they're really humble and they they receive them with with great grace. It's uh, it's a joy to joy to present them. Oh, fantastic, man. I mean, that's the beauty of it when they're humble and it's uh, I mean, generally appreciated, right, as well. It's hard work paid off and recognised. But obviously, we're not going to just talk about America and, and over here in Asia. There's a new award um, that you've launched, which is the Barrickston Best Bar Design Award. Um, this is quite unique because obviously you've kind of gone a different uh, route because this is the first one where the actual industry experts are, are showcased. We know who the judges are. Um, it's by anonymous entries. Um, and anyone can enter. So this is a very different approach to where 50 Best has been before. Um, I think it's been very open as well because you've got the list of criteria. It's very uh, transparent. So maybe tell us about where this idea came from, um, what you're expecting. And obviously the entries are still open so people can still enter now. So what should they be doing to enter? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, with with we try and add one new award a year to the to the program. Something that's going to sort of capture the zeitgeist. Um, that's interesting to interesting to people and the, and the bars and certainly the consumers. And we've been we've been toying with the idea of of basing something around bar design for for quite a quite a long time. Uh, and Barrickston, our our partner for this award, they're they're very into and the, the owner Stig Barrickston, he's very into design as as, as a concept. So it just seemed like um, it seemed like a really good fit. But one thing um, that that occurred to us very very early on, sure, we've got we've got six hundred and eighty um, voters around the world who are more than capable of of judging bars by the, the what they the look and feel and and what they're like when they go in there and the cocktails. But design is a very idiosyncratic field. So if we were going to assess this properly we needed a really a different panel of experts to firstly help us curate the the application process itself and then of course to do the to do the judging on that so um uh, my colleague Joe and I, we sort of scoured the world for, for the best bar designers um, and we wanted a really nice snapshot um, of everyone um, around the world who um, who really does have a big hand and a big foothold in, in design. So we've got a couple of people from the, the UK. We've got um, a, a lady called Bethan Ryder, who was the uh, design editor of Wallpaper magazine for, for over 10 years. A bloke called Sean Clarkson, um, who's designed some of the some of the best bars in the um, some of the best bars in the UK, uh, and then we're really pleased to have got Arundel Single in the um, on the judging panel as well out of India. Now he's got the um, the enviable accolade of having designed every Indian bar which has ever made a fifty best list. Um, so he was our sort of first choice um, for India, and he was, his his contribution has been completely invaluable. Uh, and then we've got a couple of others. We've got uh, Scott Baird, who designed Trick Dog, which has been a 50 best bar for a long time um, in San Francisco. Uh, and now he's got a design studio, which has which has built three or four bars um, in and around the west coast of the States and down into Mexico. Uh, Paul Semple, based out of Singapore. Uh, he was an Australian guy who runs um, he runs MSDO uh, Design House alongside alongside his partner, Matthew Shang. Um, and yeah, so it's a really, really strong team of individuals and they've all been so engaged about um, about really looking at bar design from um, not just the aesthetics, which is the key thing that we're looking to get across. Um, sure, there's going to be there's going to be an element about how the bar, the, the sort of the artistic imprint of the bar, but we want it to be a lot more than that. Um, accessibility is a huge point for us. So how all members or how, how all members of staff access the bar and how all people get to the bar. We often know that um, 
sometimes bars are built in sort of mm. shop houses or back streets <clears throat> and the toilets aren't very accessible. There's parts of the bar where you're, where you're banging your head. Um, so we want accessibility to be really high up in terms of how, how important it is. The use of materials and how sustainable the bar is is also going to be a, um, a judging criteria. So it's everything from the, from the look and feel to the eco ecological compatibility um, to how um, safe the bar is to use for both staff and guests. So yeah, the app applications are very much open for another couple of weeks and I'd, I'd heartily recommend um, all bars or bartenders who think they work in a, in a good looking and good uh, smooth access bar um, to get involved. We've made the application form very simple. Um, it's only six elements to it. It's, it's people and um, we ask them to write a, a supporting statement which addresses the criteria which I've just, just been through. Um, and then a few other questions and then a walkthrough video tour of the bar itself and then to provide schematic drawings and sort of architects plans etc and then yeah so when that when that closes we will hand over the judging to our six experts and then I will reveal the reveal the winners to everyone in October for Singapore and, and the world's 50 best bars very exciting okay i mean there's, there's so many i think it's quite open as well because there's so many different design bars i've been to some are quirky some are very modern and fresh and there's so many different styles right is there any um i mean what are your uh, any small details that you love about a best design bar that uh, that you really look for yeah i mean me personally i'm really into the acoustics of bars i think i've been to some really some really okay. great, bar, some really great bars with with amazing amazing sound systems like uh, listening bars are something which I've really find really find quite interesting. Um, and how that sort of sound reverberates around the bar, I think, is is a really really important aspect. Mm. Yeah, that's no, a good point. Yeah, and it's also a case of like you know, it's got to fit the concept. You know, if you've got a really unique bar that's sort of a prohibition theme, then obviously the design has to be prohibition style. So um, it'll be interesting to see some of the or whoever wins, of course, but are you going to be releasing any other sort of top three, top five, or any sort of people that enter? Yes, we are actually. We're going to be revealing the shortlist of the of the top three on our social channels in the um, in the uh, in the in the weeks building up to building up to the world's fifty best bars in October. Uh, and yeah, so those three bars um, those three bars will be invited to Singapore. And as you, as you quite rightly flagged, um, this award is open to any bar anywhere in the world. We launched this kind of concept where there doesn't have to be any sort of prior affiliation with fifty best. Uh, when we launched the Sieta Mysterios Best Cocktail Menu three years ago. Um, and it's great for us to just get bars which aren't already in our ecosystem and for us to be able to to be able to give them the 50 best spotlight as well as the bars on the list. So, yeah, we've had some amazing um, entries already from from bars. As for, we've, we've had a, a few uh, there's a great uh, Ghanaian bar which which has come in. There's a couple from um, Japan that I'd never heard of, uh, some from Scandinavia and, and, and Canada. So it's always great for for us at 50 best to to actually um, see these bars which are doing doing great th things in their local local scenes and then being able to pump them into the spotlight. Brilliant. All right, well, I'll put those uh, links in the show notes and also on my social media and Mark will do the same. So please do enter people. It's not long until the deadline. Um, but yeah, very exciting. Looking forward to seeing that. And um, I mean, coming back to Asia and, and all the exciting awards coming up here. So we've got Asia 50 Best in Hong Kong, uh, followed by the world in Singapore. How exciting is that going to be? Um, and is it going to be nice to be back in the area, Mark? Yeah, 100%, Chris, 100%. Um, it, unbelievably, we've never actually put on a 50 Best event, restaurants or bars um, in, in Hong Kong. So it's really, really exciting for us to, to be in such an important city for gastronomy, food, drink, um, travel um, and really sort of be able to, to be able to bring the bar community to a city which I'm sure the people there won't mind me saying which has been essentially hugely stymied um, around the pandemic and post pandemic it's only it's only early this year that, that, that the re restrictions have been completely relaxed so for us to be able to pump some some tourism into the and, and good sort of gastronomy but uh, drinks and, and food focused tourism into the into the city and the um, and, and the, re the surrounding region, it can only be a good thing. Um, I've never personally actually been to Hong Kong before, which is the, which is the same for lots of my team members oh, and I. So we're, um, we're super pumped about um, being able to, to put on our, our three events in the, in the city and really sort of bring the bar community together. Because um, if anything that the, that the bars, the local bars are saying is going to go by, they're really going to put on a great show for everyone. 
I mean, yeah, there's some pretty world class bars there, aren't there? And a lot of them make the top of the list. So it'll be really good. And uh, this is going to be in July, correct? Yes, indeed. Yeah, so we've got um, we've got three events that that we're well three core events now, which we're which we're running there, and the first one is going to be on the uh, on Monday, seventeenth of July, which is the the bartenders feast, which is now becoming a bit of a seminal event because there's there's no media, there's um, it's only the bartenders who are on the list. There's um, they're allowed to let their hair down. There's no no prying eyes or cameras, so they they get together the the, the day before we release the before we release the list, and that's going to be held at the um, Four Seasons Hotel in Hong Kong, great venue. Um, and then on the awards themselves on the 18th of July, they're going to be held at Rosewood Hong Kong, which is an amazing, amazing sort of super luxurious hotel. So that's going to be the two core events. And then on the Wednesday 19th, we'll be hosting um, a closing party, our second ever closing party, 50 Best. And that's going to be essentially like a brunch event, um, kicks off at midday, finishes at around four o'clock um, and is our sort of farewell to the farewell to the city. We trialed that event in in San Miguel de Allende um, and it was really, really nice, um, really, really nice way to say goodbye to the city uh, with every, with all the media and um, the, the, our brand partners and the bars themselves. So that will be our three events in Hong Kong. And yeah, we can't we can't wait to get out there and really sort of immerse ourselves in the bar community. Good stuff, good stuff. And followed by Singapore after with the world 50 best. Um, such a lot going on in the region. I'm very happy you're right in the middle because I can just sort of <laughs> <laughs> quite easily get to each. But um, yeah, I mean, it seems like Asia's really sort of coming into its own and it has been for some time now. But um, I guess it's such great uh, recognition to have both awards here. Um, but also I think for some of the smaller markets that are emerging, um, places like Indonesia, Philippines, you know, um, I guess even Vietnam is coming into its own way. Um, what do you think, how can these countries get involved more in? Uh, what, they can, what can they do to follow and be part of the awards? Yeah, I think you're exactly, you're exactly right, Chris. Um, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, they were, all, they were all nations which were really making some big moves on, uh, on the sort of global, the world's 50 best bars list um, immediately post pandemic. And I think, sorry, immediately prior to the pandemic. And I think um, pandemic sort of put paid to the to the progress of those kind of nations, because um, I did I did actually predict in, in sort of 2019, just before the pandemic, that we were going to see um, the world's best bar come from Asia. Um, in the next in the next sort of two two editions, but I think like the pandemic did for everywhere in the world, it sort of put everyone back a couple of steps. But now the the world is effectively open and Asia is is, is effectively open. I think we're going to start seeing the real sort of imprint from from those destinations. And yeah, starting with Asia's fifty best bars this year, we'll be we'll be releasing the. Um, 51 to 100 list again uh, the week before and I think there's going to be lots of lots of excitement from um, from those countries that you've listed and certainly hopefully they'll be able to take that progress into the world's 50 best bars list yeah in October this year good stuff well other than uh, all these amazing awards and, and new awards coming out um what else are you up to these days mate is there anything else exciting I mean obviously you're You've got a lot going on with the restaurants as well, right? So, what's been new for you? Yeah, I mean, the, well, I'm not actually that involved in restaurants. Um, that's a, that's another team that does that. But this year, we have launched, or I've been tasked with putting a team together with launching the world's 50 best hotels, which has been which has been like a a real oh, yeah, a, a real uh, a really exciting a really exciting moment for me. Um, before before I joined 50 Best in 2019, I was the editor of um, a travel magazine in the in the UK. So hotels and travel have always been very, very close to close to my heart. So I've been working on that in the background for the past four years. And yeah, when we announced it back in January that we were going to be announcing the world's 50 best hotels, um, it was super exciting. And I think in this again, this immediately aftermath of the pandemic where travel really needs a boost. Uh, having a list of um, completely egalitarian fair hotels ranking is is something which has been really exciting for the industry. The the key thing about the world's fifty best hotels is that it will never be it will never be pay pay to play. Um, the majority of other hotel awards which are in the space, I don't want to don't want to name any names because they've all got business models of their own. But you will generally have to you'll have to pay for the, your category listing. You'll have to pay for a nomination. You will have to pay. Um, thousands of dollars or, or thousands of pounds to to actually get a seat at the award so 
we thought our big point of difference with launching the world's 50 best hotels is that we keep them in the same model that we have restaurants and bars whereby our revenue is funded by sponsorship and we will never ask for any capital up front from the hotels themselves and the way they are yeah, the way that's been that's been received from the industry everyone is uh, is going to be extremely excited to to see the first ever egalitarian list of hotels when that comes out in um, in mid-september I'm very excited too. Yeah, I should have thought about this uh, to bring it up. It's, um, I think it's a great way forward. I mean, there's some beautiful hotel properties in Asia. Um, I haven't worked with a few of them. Um, I do have one question on this, and we can cut this out if you want to later. But um, So with the awards, obviously, we now got 50 best hotels, 50 best restaurants, 50 best bars. Does that mean that actually a hotel property could have the best hotel listing, a best restaurant listing and a best bar listing. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. So in, interestingly, the only yeah. the only property, the only hotel which has had ever had a uh, a restaurant and a bar on the top 50 list at the same time is um, the Bulgari Hotel in Dubai, which has um, restaurant Nico Romito right. and, and the Bulgari bar. So they they were the first property to take the accolade of um, having a restaurant and bar at the same time. But yes, absolutely, they could have they could have all three under one roof. In in fact, I'd almost I'd almost endorse that and hope that they do because when we ask our voters, we, when we asked our voters to go out to the hotels, um, we tried to keep it as simple as possible and exactly in the same manner that we do um, for restaurants and bars. We don't put any sort of codified list of criteria. Um, we just ask for their seven best hotel experiences, and within that, we ask them to take into account that the whole holistic experience of the hotel visit so that's everything from the first concept contact point with reception or concierge the journey to the room the room itself of course the amenities in the room but absolutely the f and b on site as well so we certainly do want if they think that there's a great restaurant they should rank that highly in their seven if they think there's a great bar they should rank that highly and if it's got both then it's it's ticking ticking lots of boxes for us so yeah i'd um I don't think it will be long before um, a hotel has, yeah, a hotel itself, the bar and the restaurant all on the list at the same time. Interesting. It'll be good to see who gets that. Well, Mark, it's always been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. And uh, for all the listeners, definitely check out the Best Bar Design Award, enter if you still want to. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Asia, mate.